Today, we're actually filming from the Valley United Way building on Grove Street in Shelton. And we're here with members of Treasure Time and some of their good friends. Uh, starting with, on my left, Suzanne Major, who is the founder of Treasure Time, right? Yes. Donna Hayes, I'm the oncology social worker at the Center for Cancer Care at Griffin Hospital. Excellent, excellent. And Shauna? Shauna Savary, I am a member of the Allocations Committee at Treasure Time. Okay, and Ken, right? That's correct. Hi, I'm Ken Shepard. I'm the general manager with the Bridgeport Bluefish. Excellent. I, well, I want to thank you, all of you, for coming today. Um, and thanks to the United Way for letting us use their facilities to film this. Um, so I guess since you had founded it, Suzanne, the, the organization, um, start a little bit about um, how it came to be, uh, sure. what inspired you to actually uh, come up with Treasure Time, and, uh, and we'll go from there. Okay, sure. So um, I guess approaching a year ago, I had a friend who came to me and said that her husband had uh, melanoma. And so being good friends of theirs, I really wanted to do something to help them. And so I said, let's do a fundraiser. Let's mm -hmm. do something to, to help you guys. And they have three children, 10, 8, and 5. And the 8-year-old also has cancer. Oh, really? He has ALL. He's in remission, thank God, right now. What is ALL? It's uh, like a childhood leukemia. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Right? Okay. And, um, and so they were very private. And they didn't really want their name out there. They're, they, they're like, we don't want to walk into a diner and, and see our name. You know, sure, or picture sure. Plastic. Sure. So I went on the search to find something else that I could do for them. So I thought, oh, maybe something like Make-A-Wish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I called Make-A-Wish, and they only help uh, children under the age of 18. Okay, and for those viewers who don't know like what Make-A-Wish is all about, just more, I guess more so than that, what, what, kind of how does Make-A-Wish function? And then we can kind of talk how it's different. Sure. So Make-A-Wish is basically um, an organization that was put together to help grant the wishes of children who have uh, life-threatening illnesses. Mm -hmm. And so pretty much whatever that, that child's wishes, they will make it come true. So I don't know if you guys saw the, everybody saw it, it was on uh, television and there was a little boy who wanted to be Superman. Okay. Anybody see that? In California. In California. And so this little boy, like they, they made him Superman. Oh wow. Or Batman. Maybe it was Batman. Right. But they made him a superhero. And mm -hmm. they turned like the whole city into like was it Gotham? Gotham. So that was right. Gotham yeah, City. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So they turned the whole city into Gotham oh, City. Wow. And they did this whole elaborate plan for this boy who right. wanted to be a superhero. Oh, wow. that's great. So that's what they do, and I think they range, you know, from anything, really, it could be any wish that the child has. Right. So for us, um, so I went looking for something like that and uh, for adults, and I couldn't find anything. Okay. So I found two you know, very small companies in the Midwest, but just like one, two person operations. It was really not uh, you know, something that was worldwide. Mm -hmm. So I realized at that point that there was a need to, to do something like this uh, for the parents who are sick. Right, right. So I established this organization, Treasure Time, and we help grant the wishes of parents who have life-threatening illnesses who want to create a memory with their children. Oh, wow. So it's basically, you know, the difference is that we're focusing on not just the parents. It's, it's for the parents that are sick, mm -hmm. but really it focuses on the whole family. We want to help the family create a memory. It's, it's giving them a break from what they're dealing with, and it's giving them the opportunity to just focus on themselves as a family and, and be able to spend time together, which mm -hmm. is so important. So the idea of the name, Treasure Time, is like some time they can treasure together. Exactly. And kind of carry it with them. And I think, if I remember correctly, you, in some of your prior interviews, you mentioned, you know, the, the sort of the fallback is typically, well, uh, there's a family illness, let's, you know, raise some money, help that. And the idea here, like you said, is to create more of a memory, let's say, than a financial assistance where they could theoretically they could get that from other organizations so you're giving them something a little unique exactly there are a lot of organizations out there that help financially help the families financially mm -hmm. and there's a lot of companies that have grants I think Griffin has some sort of a grant to help families as well so I think it's just um, for me and this is I always tell people right when my grandparents had their 65th wedding anniversary Instead of giving uh, leaving us money, mm -hmm. they decided to, to help us uh, create a memory. So they took 17 of us oh on a God. cruise. Really? My parents, uh, my aunt and uncle, and 
the six grandchildren and all their significant others. Where did you go? We went to like Caribbean mm -hmm. summer, summer, <laughs> summer warm. Summer, summer warm, that's right. Wherever it is in the Caribbean. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. exactly. Anything warm is great. Um, but you know, it's just my, my grandfather's passed now um, about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother's 98 and at this point doesn't really know who I am. And every time my parents, the, the children, anytime we get together, it always comes up. Oh, wow. It's, you know, they gave us something that was so much more than money. Sure. It was, sure. they gave us a gift. They gave us a moment. Um, I mean, it's sort of a condensed version. When they say have quality time with your family, you're mm -hmm. basically saying, here, this is a condensed version of, you know, focused quality time with your family. Exactly. That's great. That's really good. Basically. I think it's so important to just be able to spend that time together. And, you know, that's something that, long after my grandparents are gone, we'll always have that memory. Right, that's right. And that's our tagline is giving the gift of moments because oh, wow. we're giving these families a moment, mm -hmm. a moment to spend with each other, quality time, mm -hmm. you know, families, and, and I'm sure that, you know, our, our panel uh, can talk more about this, but mm -hmm. what it's like for a family going through this. Uh, it's it's a lot of stress and, and there's a lot of appointments and it's just a lot on the family. Mm -hmm. So we're giving them a break from that, just a chance right. to enjoy each other. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the panel, and Ken, you're a general manager at the Bridgeport Bluefish, right? That's correct. And uh, so to what Suzanne was, was speaking of, I mean, how does how do the Bluefish get involved in creating these or partnering with? Them? Sure. Well, through a through a mutual business acquaintance. Um, uh, who knows that I'm stage four kidney cancer, uh, then immediately said, oh, I need to introduce you to uh, Suzanne, who was with Treasure Time, began to tell me what their mission was, and I thought, wow, what a, a great organization. And I really felt that um, the Bluefish should be a part of that in any way that we can to help raise awareness and help raise revenues for the organization, just starting. But just what they're doing, and speaking from somebody who's a stage four kidney cancer, um, and cancer survivor, that an organization like this is is um, is just great, and I and I can imagine that the families that benefit from this will, as she touched on with what um, what happened with her grandparents, mm -hmm. it is so much more than leaving somebody thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to spend that money; it's going to be gone. You'll never mm -hmm. know what you spend it on. Right. But to have the actual experience of having some memories together as a family that your family will hold on to, I think is incredible. So, so I guess from, from let's say, the Bluefish being a, a partner, um, what sort of things do you do? Are there fundraisers that you do, let's say, at Harbor Yard with them? Or is it, you know, or do they come, do they, maybe some of the players come to the, to the Valley and do it that way? I mean, have you brainstormed ideas or already done things like that? Actually, we have a brainstorm meeting coming up in okay. a couple of weeks. Okay. So we are going to talk about what we want to do, but we do have a really exciting uh, venture, joint venture coming up. So uh, July 26th and 27th, okay. we are going to have a 24-hour softball tournament. Oh, wow. At the stadium. So we're really excited. Uh, we're going to have 32 teams. Okay. And so the 16 teams play the 16 teams, and then whoever has the most runs will win the tournament. Is this adult, child, high school, what do we have? It's, I would say adults. Mostly adults. Yeah, okay. yeah, I would say adults. Mm -hmm. Although we will have the kids there because oh, sure. they're, they're already asking what they can do. <laughs> so we just, you know, we'll probably do some sort of a raffle. Oh, and yeah. Cool. So uh, I know my son, who's nine, and my daughter, who's six, they're already like, we get to work, right? Right. <laughs> They, they're right. dying to be a part of this, so we, we told them they could go and sell raffle tickets oh, you you know, at idea. the event, right. so it would be fun. But, and um, you and I were talking before, I mean, I mean, the idea that, you know, like I've been to a couple of Bluefish games and, and the one thing that jumped out at me was, you know, versus let's say a Major League Baseball game, is the number of activities that go on. I mean, between every inning, mm -hmm. there's something that gets the crowd involved. You know, typically you go to a professional, more, uh, higher level, and maybe they'll have, you know, when they have t-shirts or there's like one or, or a trivia contest. Mm -hmm. This was like, and kids doing bat races and all this other stuff. I mean, it was, it really felt like you were just at sort of a picnic and there happened to be a baseball game going on. It's exactly it's, how it feels. That's right. great, and I think that's a really cool idea. The other thing I was thinking of was, and not to step on anybody's toes, but since you mentioned softball, the Braquettes in Stratford. I don't know if that's 
occurred to anybody to no. get them involved. Be only because, I mean, I don't know how that works, and, but I thought, you know, that's why I was asking if it was adult, you get women's. I mean, I've gone to breakout games as well. And, I grew uh, up in Stratford, and yeah. I know the breakouts very, very yeah. well. Yeah, so yeah. just an idea, obviously. Mm -hmm. you know, have to, but, you know, like I said, it's a separate thing, mm -hmm. obviously. But, yeah. But, um, but anyway, uh, We've got a whole group of people that are going to be coming to our brainstorming mm -hmm. meeting who've got great ideas. Uh, Jamie Toole, who is the assistant general, assistant general manager, he came to our Valentine's Day gala last week, and he's just fantastic. He's got a lot of great ideas. He's like, oh, we have to do this, and we have to do this. <laughs> so um, he's just, he's great, and he really understands a lot about, you know, the stadium and, and you know, all of the exciting things that we can do. So it, it's sure to be a good time. So yeah, and it's a unique event. I mean, it's going to be an event that I've actually wanted to do this event for over 20 years. So this is going to be the first time really? in running a minor league baseball team that I've actually done this event, and I'm so excited about doing this, especially for Treasure Time. Right. And I think that the fun part is going to be the fact that so many people would love to experience what it's like to play on the field. They come and watch games, right, and, exactly. and then to play on the field, and, oh, yeah. and most of the games, or a lot of the games, will be under the lights because it's 24 hours. Oh, that's so right. I think the excitement of being able to play on the field, play on the lights, and at the same time help treasure time is going to be mm. yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So you're literally going to have games going out like four in the morning, three in the morning. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. We're looking forward to it. That's amazing. <laughs> well, that's what works out well there is when you start looking at third shift. Right, uh, people. That's the places that you know where the the, the manufacturing industry in this area right. could put teams into this tournament. Oh and yeah, play them. When that's they right. Get off that third shift, mm -hmm. they could come over and play their game at the ballpark. Yeah, that's a great. Have you ever done a twenty-four hour event other than Treasure Time? No. So this is no, this will be the first one, and that's we're going to invite cool. people to come out. And if they want to bring a tent and sleep over, they can do that at the wow. ballpark. Oh, what a great idea. That's going to be a lot of fun. In our, in our brainstorm, we'll talk about other things, but we'd like to get radio stations involved doing remotes, maybe uh, different stations coming in and out to do remotes, okay. and I think you get a celebrity team involved. And There's a lot of different things that could happen, but I think the uniqueness of the fact that it's 24 hours right, exactly. will bring a lot of attention to the event, which in turn brings a lot of attention to Treasure Time. Is there, mm -hmm. uh, now obviously you're going to promote it, on yes. their website. Um, and and yes. the Bluefish have their own website. I imagine that's going to be... We do, actually. We have our own website. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll actually be promoting it all season long because the event's going to take place, as Susan said, in July. <laughs> so we're going to be promoting it all the way up until okay. the point that she says they sold out you know, the teams. But at that point, it's also going to be open to the general public to attend and come and enjoy you know, seeing what's going right. on. And what is that website? <laughs> it is www.bridgeportbluefish.com. <laughs> Look at that. It's <laughs> it's treasuretime.org. Treasuretime.org. And we also have a Facebook page. Oh, that's right. right. Facebook.com slash treasuretime. Right, right. So. Now, one other thing about that event is it's going to actually flow into, it'll start on a Friday at 5, will flow into, obviously, Saturday at 5 p.m. Right. Six. And then on uh, 6, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> She's on top of it. Then on <laughs> Sunday, the Bluefish are at home, and uh, Treasure Time is going to have an event at the ballpark that day that will kind of tie in the 24-hour softball uh, at a Bluefish game. So it'll oh, be a wow. nice weekend, Friday through Sunday. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank That's you. a great idea. Yes. You guys interested? Would you play softball? Oh, you... I I played for a number of years when oh, yeah? I was younger. Oh really? I'm what, very looking forward to what joining. Position? What position? Um, I played catcher. I played uh, pitcher. Wow. I also did uh, shortstop. Nice. Um, oh, I'm very looking forward to uh, the three joining. critical positions. Absolutely. Of the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> right there. To start a team around. <laughs> So, and actually, I wanted to talk. Oh, I mean, in addition to the Bluefish um, Griffin Hospital, you've worked with them and partnered with them. And obviously, with the, the cancer center that was dedicated a few years ago, um, you know, that's become a really a, a landmark thing in this area to have that much focus. On, you know, there are certainly several hospitals in the Valley area, New Haven area, things like that. But the state of the art things that go on there. And maybe uh, Tony, you can talk a little bit about what's offered there, and then maybe how it ties back into Treasure Time. Well, Suzanne came to. The Cancer Center mm -hmm. and we were able to give her a tour, uh, talk with her a little bit about what patients experience as they're going through cancer diagnosis and treatment. And as you mentioned, the Cancer Center was dedicated five years ago mm -hmm. last spring and it's really a little gem right here in the valley. Mm -hmm. uh, we encourage people to come and take a tour, or you can also take a virtual tour 
on our website, griffincancercenter.org. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we operate under the plain tree model of care. Right. So it's comprehensive, it's caring, it's not just the physical needs of the person who is diagnosed, but also right. the emotional and the spiritual needs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think anyone who has gone through cancer treatment and uh, survivorship will understand that that is equally as important as the physical oh, sure, care. Sure. Mm -hmm. and, and even not necessarily Absolutely. directly, you know, family members, friends, who are you know, dealing with that. I actually mentioned, you mentioned plain tree. I actually used to play the piano at Griffin um, as a volunteer. And I realized it, they have one in the main hospital. There's like six pianos. Then there's the beautiful one in the lobby of the cancer center. And it, you realize it's plain tree that's pushing art, music therapy, pet therapy. Mm -hmm. You know, sort of these almost homeopathic or alternative medicines. That you know, I mean, not that Griffin isn't already willing to do that, but you, you start to hear more about being affiliated. And when I see other hospitals that are plain tree, it's like, oh, look at that. And then they have you know, music and things like that. So I think that's becomes apparent, you know, with why, why that's so effective. And like you said, you know, they, I guess there's actually scientific data that will tell you, you know, people feel good or feel optimistic about their recovery, they will actually heal more quickly or more efficiently than someone who feels like, oh wow, you know, this is really overwhelming. The Cancer so. Center is a, a very healing environment. It's inspired by nature. Uh, I encourage people to come. It's close to home, it's mm -hmm. personal, it's mm -hmm. warm and comprehensive care. We have Smilo, Yale New Haven Hospital, oncologists, and uh, it is an amazing place. Yeah. We, we went for a tour there, so I was part of the leadership Greater Valley Right, that's actually how class. we met. That's yes, we met during we the media met, thing. Through exactly, that. we met through that. Yeah. And one of our sessions was going to Griffin Hospital and taking the tour, and honestly, Thankfully, I had not had a reason to be in the cancer sure, center before, sure, sure. Um, as I'm sure everybody feels the same way. But getting a tour, I was blown away by the facilities. I mean, the beautiful garden in the middle and all of the rooms overlook it. Mm -hmm. And I think my favorite part was the, the room where you get the treatment. Yes, the Linux or the radiation right. therapy room. I. When I walked in here, you walk in and then you're in the, inside the room. Right. And there's not a lot of equipment everywhere. There's just like closet space and the machine. And it was, you know, there's these beautiful colored walls and plants and pictures. I mean, gorgeous. And so we're standing in there, and the person who's doing the tour says, So did you notice the door? And we're all like, What door? <laughs> And what they've done is just amazing. They've taken the door, and it's this big, like, vault-type door, right, which right. I guess it has to be. Yes. And so they've painted it so that it looks like it's part of the wall. Oh, wow. It just kind of blends in. It blends in. There's the molding the same way the wall does, and it's painted, you know, just like the wall. Wow. So when you walk in, you don't notice it's a door. And then apparently there's some special technology built in so that when the door closes, it's silent. So that the patient that's in there never knows that the door is opening oh, or closing. Oh, okay, right. Yes. So, so that's tranquil. If you have ever undergone radiation therapy, right. um, it's usually a very sterile environment. Right, and right, it can right. you know, increase your fear sure. uh, and your discomfort. So this is geared to be a healing, comfortable environment yeah. with works of art, personalized music, oh, wow. uh, just warm people, uh, just to help to get you through. Um, now it's interesting because they listen to you talk. I mean, it just seems like you got the synergy between what you're trying to do between the organization of Treasure Time and that. It's like exactly you know from a cancer perspective, you you probably, you probably do other things besides that, or you would want to help. You know, you're not really illness. Related. It just if it's a parent versus a child, but I just listened to you, and I mean, did you know a lot about this before you approached her, or I so don't... I had met, uh, I helped out, I volunteered last year at the uh, Griffin Golf Outing, okay, and so I'd met a couple of people there, and I just said, you know, and I was just at that point starting out right. with Treasure Time, and I said, you know, this is this is the kind of hospital and and, and cancer center that. I want to be involved with because right. I just loved the way that it was, you know, everything was handled and the way that I heard that the care mm -hmm. was handled. And so 
I just, I really wanted to be a part of it. So I went and started talking to them and we realized that it was a good fit. We really mm -hmm. want to be able to help, you know, some of, some of their patients. Mm -hmm. um, you know, here in the Valley, mm -hmm. this is where we're starting out and we do eventually want to expand. We, we plan on being in every state, in oh, really? every country. Wow. Um, yes, we definitely want to expand. We already have people actually that are interested in, in expanding for us in other states. Wow. So we're just waiting for the 501c3 to come uh, through. So any, they, anybody knows somebody in the IRS? <laughs> <laughs> how did they hear about you? Did, you? did you like sort of promote your organization beyond Connecticut, or did people, are people hearing about you either through the Facebook or? People are hearing about us. Um, the people that have been interested are just people that I've talked to, okay. places I've gone. Right. Uh, there's somebody up in Vermont where, where my family and I ski, and you know we just start talking about Treasure Time over lunch. Right, and right, exactly. Next thing you know, they're like, we really want to open up, you know, a, a, um, like a satellite, a satellite office up here, and wow. so and the woman works with with hospitals up in in Vermont. So and I have somebody in California wow. who's interested, uh, somebody who's recently retired, and so she's. Very interested. I've got someone in Atlanta, Georgia. So we we definitely have interest in, in people that want to help us expand. So, mm -hmm. so I think Griffin is a really great place for us to start. We've been working pretty closely together, Donna and I, and our groups, to to make sure that we are communicating the right way. Right, right. Because as I'm sure Ken can can tell us, you know, um, there's certain there's a certain way to kind of put somebody who's who's in this situation at ease. Versus, you know, um, making, them more making it more, more making them more uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. sure. So, so Griffin's been wonderful in really helping us, working with us on our paperwork and our brochures, just to make sure that we're making people feel as comfortable as possible. That's good. We try to offer support programs and services to patients, and we have worked with Seymour Pink, who thinking, is a wonderful organization. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, when you were talking, yes. you know, the, about. What, praising Griffin and the thing. I think back when we had Seymour Pink on the show and Marcy White was undergoing treatment, you know, she would mention things. I mean, obviously, you know, there's the, you obviously want to have, you know, radiation or chemotherapy or all sort of the, the science behind what you're doing. But all she kept talking about was come in, people, everybody knows my name, they say hello to me, you know, that sort of warm feeling that you're talking about. That, you know, it's no different than like when you go to a restaurant, you know, the people who work, I guess it's, it's that sort of, and that's also how the Valley operates too. I mean, I think mm -hmm. the Valley is much more touchy-feely, let's say, than some other areas of the state or the country. So I think it just bodes well to be like that. And, right. and uh, but yeah, you mentioned that they do an outstanding job, you know. We have with, a very active breast cancer support group uh, called the Circle of Friends, and we are uh, supported by Seymour Pink. They have been tremendous to our breast cancer survivors, and uh, we also offer various financial assistance programs because I, I think it's important for people to recognize that when you receive a cancer diagnosis, you may have financial difficulties, you may need to be educated. It's kind of a parallel universe. There's all kinds of, uh, I'm sure Ken can speak to this, all kinds of uh, acronyms and uh, oh, yeah, wording sure. and, yeah, and sure. uh, information that you may have never heard about before. So we offer patient navigation. Right. Uh, we just try to really wrap our caring and our warmth around that patient. Mm -hmm. So that treasure time would be another support program that we could offer to patients. We're always open to, we have a program called Little Wonder that patients uh, are able to benefit from, and um, it's a fantastic thing to have patients be able to take a little time out of their treatment right. and spend some quality moments with their family and their caregivers. It's a way to thank your caregivers. Um, it's very important to healing. And Ken, I, I'm sure you can speak to that as well. Yeah, I think that's really important. I know when uh, when I was first diagnosed, and I was diagnosed at stage three, okay. that it, it was like uh, standing on the other side of the room looking back at myself going, is this really yeah, happening? Yeah. And immediately you have a flood of fear and anxiety, and you immediately think you're going to die the next day. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you, you are now open to this whole new world, which... As Donna mentioned, it's you know you're hearing things you don't understand and terminology you need to understand. So I think it's important for anybody that's out there that 
either has uh, you know, a late stage cancer or has cancer, diagnosed with cancer, or any kind of terminal disease, uh, or has family or friends like that, to understand that there are people and organizations like uh, the, the hospital and Treasure Time that can be there to help you and to, uh, to understand that you know, all that fear and anxiety is not something that's going to help you. It's normal, but you need to be able to say, okay, what am I going to do to focus on today and get myself through today? And don't be afraid to, to reach out and let people help you. Exactly. Uh, you know, I mean, they talk about being compassionate care, person to person. I mean, that, that's what you need. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times people, you know, my, my reaction to all of my diagnosis was that I'm a very open person and I, and I immediately want to talk about it and share it. I, I put it up on Facebook and I, you know, I gain strength out of having people uh, sympathize with me and empathize with me and, you know, show that they care and, and that makes me feel good because I get the strength from so many others. You know, when you're dealing in a family situation like that, it's so, uh, it's so easy to immediately think, me, what about me? What am I, what am I gonna do about this? But you right. can't forget the fact that you have potentially a spouse or significant other or children involved and you have to think about them as well. Mm -hmm. Sure, so right. as, as selfish as, as you probably deserve to be and, right, and right. want to be at times, right. you have to be a little selfless because it's really not just you. I mean, if this should take my life, I, my family's got to live on right. with the pain of, of you know, that happening. And I think the key to what you're saying, though, is to, is to hopefully have the support, you know, like there's support like ask for help, but then there's like support that, you, that if you're getting treatment at Griffin, or I'm not sure where you got your, or where you're getting your tr cancer treatment. Yeah, I go to Hopkins. Okay. So that it just sort of happened, like you, obviously if you're at Griffin, you shouldn't have to ask for that. It should, that's kind of the purpose of that facility. But the, I, I could also see the, the turnaround where the anxiety would be there. Like if you're, you know, I'm single, you know, and it just affects me, you know, yeah, I'm family jumping in, but, it, but if, I'm, if I'm married or have kids, you know, I might go from worrying about me to boom, like, oh my God, what are my kids going to do without a father? Or what, you know, yeah. so it's so can And those, def those thoughts go through your mind daily. Oh, yeah. Oh, and they sure. can consume you. And to have any kind of a, an outlet to, to be able to not think about that for any period of time right. is helpful. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you have to face, you know, Don and I were talking earlier, and, and I'm, a, I'm a realistic optimist. Okay, so I'm not so optimistic that I that I push aside the right. reality of the situation. I'm a realist, but I, but I also am optimistic in this fact that okay, I'm going to battle on this with this every day. Mm -hmm. We're going to focus on today. We're not going to you know we're going to if we've got to think about tomorrow, we'll make decisions about it, and then we're going to not worry about tomorrow because I can't control that. And so it's important to have organizations like Treasure Time, you know, like Griffin Hospital and their Cancer Care Center to be able to take some of that anxiety and that daily stress that you're feeling away. Again, organizations like this, I think, are so crucial to the daily survival of not only the cancer, or, or the I speak as cancer, but I know there's other terminal diseases. Right. It's not only important for that person dealing with that illness, but it's also important for the family Absolutely. that we have those kind of outlets. So sure. I'm, we're just so thankful that you know we can be a part of what's happening with Treasure Time and. And um, you know, I'm, we're going to do everything we can to be a part of of promoting their brand and their message because it's such a great thing to be doing. Oh, yeah. And you know, hats off to Suzanne for for even you know thinking to do this and, yes. and getting this exactly. underway. Yes. If you have any comments on the show, feel free to provide feedback, questions, or suggestions to lookingupvalley at gmail.com or check out our Facebook page and dedicated website. Thank you very much.